Hello, I'm Naomi Pace and I'm with the New Israel Fund. Today we're going to be speaking with Chagai Elad, who is the Executive Director of the Association for Civil Rights in Israel, which is the flagship grantee of the New Israel Fund. There are a lot of serious issues going on in Israel right now, particularly having to do with human rights, civil rights, and defending democracy. And hopefully, Chagai and I will be able to tell you a little bit about each of them. A lot of what ACRI hears, a lot of what we hear at the New Israel Fund is that Israel is basically a democracy. Israel has safeguards. Israel has the rule of law. We agree with that, although we're certainly concerned about the direction in which the society seems to be going. In international fora, from the United Nations to the international press, Israel is singled out for its wrongdoing. And compared to many authoritarian countries, totalitarian countries, uh, the problems that Israel has internally are actually much less. So that Israel is targeted, there's some very deliberate anti-Semitism going on, there's some deliberate misunderstanding of what it is like to live in a state of siege. And I think that you're sympathetic to the viewpoint that no matter how good or bad things are inside Israel, Israel certainly does have real enemies. There's no question that it does. Under those circumstances, what do you do with the long-standing charge that those of us who are involved with social change, those of us who are involved with human rights, what we do when we're bringing it to an international audience is essentially washing Israel's dirty laundry in public, as they say, and providing fodder for Israel's enemies and their propaganda machine. What, what's the overall answer for that? Uh, we're living in the 21st century. So first of all, this uh, romantic, nostalgic notion that uh, we can wash the laundry somewhere. Uh, in Pri private laundry. Privately, and, that, and no one will pay attention. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I don't know for how many years uh, that has not been the case. There's like one global media village that we're part of, uh, but for quite some time that has not been the case. Uh, news in Israel is immediately translated also into English, even if we were, even if I wasn't here speaking in English. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's no, there's no question that these issues would be discussed internationally. So just in terms of like what is happening in the real world, uh, that's a fantasy. Mm -hmm. For a long time, it has been a fantasy. So I would recommend that people just get up to speed with you know, the existence of international news channels and the internet mm -hmm. uh, and, and move beyond that point. But even more important than that, it's questions of human rights, especially in the context of what's happening in the occupied Palestinian territories, but not only there. These are questions of global concern, as anywhere else. Uh, what was happening in the United States in the context of civil liberties in the post-1911 years was not only discussed in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and the issues that are still being fought by our colleagues in the ACLU, for instance, uh, with regard um, to uh, the interrogation techniques uh, of, the, of the CIA torture, these are not domestic American yes. issues. They are discussed globally. Mm -hmm. And when they are discussed globally, uh, they do not make uh, the US uh, look any better. Uh, and yet, no one is trying to shut down the ACLU, to the best of my uh, understanding. Well, I'm not sure. It depends on what we think the government's reaction was to the exposure of waterboarding, for example. There were people here very, very unhappy about what that did to America's image in the world. But again, the, Israel is more vulnerable. The, Israel the, has more the, enemies. The, but there's a, there's a distinction between people here being very unhappy mm -hmm. with ACLU positions, as many Israelis are perhaps unhappy with ACRI positions, and trying to change the legal reality mm -hmm. uh, to a situation where the ACLU cannot do its job, uh, and to inciting uh, in such uh, derogatory ways against the ACLU. That's the difference. And the other difference is that with regard to vulnerability, I would actually point out to the fact, you know, former President Bush messing around with constitutional rights in the post-1911 years, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. But there is, at least there is a constitution and there's a strong high court of justice in this country. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be totally calm 
that it's going to be okay. I would be deeply concerned. But when I think of the reality in Israel, when there is no constitution, and where the authority of the High Court of Justice has reached a point where Chief Justice Benish had to say to uh, state attorneys, may I remind you that the decisions of this court, uh, of this court are not mere recommendations because the government has begun to not follow through. The government is ignoring, ignoring the rulings of the High Court. Yeah. Then I would be actually much more concerned about these vulnerability aspects of, uh, of Israeli democracy. Well, let's conclude with a question that has to do with Israel and the United States. American Jews, by and large, are progressive. Uh, Eighty percent of us voted for President Obama. The support for human rights, the support for religious pluralism, the support for what are thought of as progressive values is pretty deep-seated in the American community. Is the direction that Israel is now headed in going to create more of a values gap with the American Jewish community, which has always been very loyal to Israel? There's been very little daylight between Israel and the American Jewish community and its support for the government. And those of us who are progressive, those of us who support your work, what is the most important thing that we can be doing here? I mean, if Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening to you, he's not going to listen to me either. What is the pressure point? What should we be doing to help reverse the tide of what's happening with democracy in Israel? I think that uh, the first and most direct answer uh, is to invest more in those that are doing this work in Israel. Uh, and I apologize for making the obvious pitch for <laughs> investing in the new Israel Fund at this point that's in this okay, conversation. That's okay, better you than me. But, uh, but I think that that's, that's one of the best ways to answer this, uh, to put our money where our values are. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, and that's, that's is essential. I think that's also to send a strong message uh, that we will not be um, feared into um, not continuing to do our job on the contrary. Um, and I think that um, another essential part of the answer mm -hmm. is making it possible for more Jews and others in this country to have an honest conversation on what is happening in Israel. There's a difference, there's a difference mm -hmm. between being critical uh, of policies of the government of the State of Israel and caring about the future of Israeli society. Mm -hmm. um, and describing, I mean, part of like the, the rhetoric that we're getting back in Israel is also being used here, that those that there speak here against certain policies of the government of the State of Israel are anti-Israeli and, so, and sometimes even portrayed as, as anti-Semitic. I think that many people here, and I hope that many more people here, mm -hmm. will speak out and get involved on these very issues, not because they're anti-Israeli, but because they're doing it, because they care about the future of that society. And for many Jews in this country, it's part of their identity, caring about Israel and its future. And to stand idle in this uh, situation mm -hmm. where, from the pr point of view of democracy and human rights, Israel is on a slippery slope and slipping fast. And to continue uh, not to be involved, uh, that's not being helpful, that's not being supportive, that's not really caring about the future. That's only enabling the further deterioration of the situation. Um, so I would even add a sense of urgency to this call uh, for action, for people to get involved, become more informed of what is happening really on the issues beyond the sound bites, mm -hmm. uh, and to be a part of building a better future in Israel that will be based on social justice, democracy, and end for the occupation, equality for all Israeli citizens. That's the future that we want to build, and that's the future that we need more support in order to reach to. If you would like to find out more about the New Israel Fund and the issues we work on in Israel, please visit our website at www.nif.org. If you would like to find out more about ACRI and the very important work that they are doing in Israel, please visit that website at www.acri.org.il. And thank you so much for spending this time with us today.